Well, now to the top stories of the day. And who better to join me for that than the Australian newspaper's national editor, Dennis Shanahan. Dennis, welcome to the show. I want to start with the latest polling and election results, which clearly indicate that the Albanese government seems to be losing the hearts and minds of Australian people. On Saturday, over 100,000 people voted in the Fadden by-election. And although we need to accept that the seat is considered a blue-ribbon Liberal National Party seat, spanning from the northern end of the Gold Coast, um, well, the result is still a win for Peter Dutton and Fadden's new member, Cameron Caldwell. Dennis, the Fadden campaign was dominated by negative media coverage over the robo-debt debacle and the allegations made against former Morrison government minister and Fadden MP Stuart Robert. And yet there was a strong 2.54% swing toward the National Party. I think it'll be even bigger than that once postals are all done. And that's on top of their 10.7% margin going into it. Do you think this result causes any concerns for Labor? Oh, I think that uh, the uh, reaction from the Prime Minister and other senior Labor MPs is, is about correct. It's what was expected. Uh, I think it actually means a lot more for Peter Dutton than it does for Anthony Albanese as a specific result. Uh, after the loss in the Aston by-election in Victoria, clearly Peter Dutton couldn't afford even a poor win or a, a win with a low margin. So this has really given a boost to, to Peter Dutton uh, and uh, returned a, a Liberal uh, MP to the Parliament. I think that the real problem for the Labor Party will be that what we've actually seen underlying this, that the campaign, the by-election campaign, was aimed at cost of living. It was really aimed at saying... Uh, the government's not doing enough about inflation, about the cost of energy, food, uh, and all of these other things that people are primarily concerned about. There's also an angle there where people believe that the government has been spent too much time uh, talking about the voice to parliament instead of actually dealing uh, with the economy. So I think the real political message here for Labor out of the uh, Fadden by-election is, is not that, uh, you know, they should have done better. I think uh, Peter Dutton's done pretty well and, and as expected. But the theme of the election, of the by-election, actually shows the government a real weak spot and something that they are going to have to address in the months ahead. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, speaking of using shiny, bright things like the voice as a distraction from the economy, the latest polling shows that only 41% of voters will now say that they will vote yes for the voice. 38% of female voters now say they approve and the no vote in the regions has blown out to 62%. Dennis, do you think that confusion and concern over Albanese's voice to parliament resulted in the swing against Labor because of that distraction factor? Oh, I think that the distraction factor was part of it, uh, but clearly uh, people are falling away uh, from their support for The Voice. Uh, let's remember that when this first came up, uh, the support, the goodwill in the community was high. It was about 75% people saying, yes, they would approve of A Voice. But the more people have seen of it, the less they like it, uh, the more they ask for information and don't get it, the less they like the prospect and more and more are determining to vote against it. One interesting point here is apart from the headline uh, numbers, uh, now, you know, very strong, 41, only 41% saying they would vote yes, uh, is that within those numbers there has been a decline, a trend in every aspect of the voting public, except for green supporters, green voters, showing that there has been a decline since the legislation was passed in the parliament, there has been a decline in the net result in every demographic. And that includes Labor voters, younger voters, certainly women voters, even those with university educations who were one of the strongest supporters of The Voice, there has been a relative decline in that net difference between yes and no. 
So I think that uh, Anthony Albanese's declaration today, a concession indeed, that the Yes campaign had to do much more, had to be stronger in the case it put, was a concession that up to now, the No campaign has won the debate on the voice to Parliament. And I think that the Prime Minister's delay this afternoon saying, oh, well, we're only going to have a five or six week campaign at most, and I won't be announcing it until quite late in the piece, means that he is aiming to have a short, sharp campaign where all of those $20 million plus from corporate Australia can be brought to bear on a very strong advertising campaign. I think there is a big danger here uh, for Anthony Albanese. If this continues, if the next poll in August shows that the continuing decline in support for the yes uh, vote in the referendum, then it will be almost too far to drag back, even with a mammoth election campaign, uh, advertising style campaign, uh, in those five or six weeks. I think that we're on the cusp here. Uh, Anthony Albanese is confident it will still pass with a majority of the people and a majority of the states. He's conceded the Yes campaign. By the way, he's the leader of the Yes campaign. Uh, hasn't been doing well <laughs> enough. Well, I think the next few weeks will actually determine how strong that will be. He's determined he's going to push ahead whether it is going to fail or not. But I think the next few weeks, the polling will actually really decide how people will get. Because what's happening is people who support the voice are afraid it is going to lose. They are afraid of the tactics being used. Mm. They don't. They want more information as well, and this is where the heart of the failure is, and it's also down to Anthony Albanese. You make a good observation there. I mean, there is a huge kitty of dollars in the yes pocket that hasn't yet been turned um, turned into advertising. They haven't turned the tap of dollars on yet. And yet they are already outspending the no campaign, $8 for every one that no spends. Isn't the heart of the weakness and of the yes campaign that it is based on the idea that you should not treat Australians equally in our democracy, whereas the opposite was the case, um, you know, that all Australians should be equal before the law was the strength of the argument in the marriage campaign. How do they flip voters from backing equality then to backing inequality now? Well, I think that uh, the Australian people actually want more information. Both the yes campaigners and the no campaigners, people who are in the middle, they actually want more information because for them to make up their mm. mind, and clearly a lot of people have already made up their mind uh, based on the existing arguments, uh, and clearly the no campaign is winning that campaign. Uh, they've won it so far. But I think that people still want more information and an advertising campaign doesn't answer that. And I think that what they really need yeah. to do, the Yes campaign needs to start to put out, and that means Anthony Albanese, if he's not going to change it, if he's not going to take out executive government, which a lot of supporters of the, of the referendum actually wanted him to do, then he is going to have to start to try and recognise that people want more information and he's not going to get them to change their vote unless he does do that and in a very positive way. I think there's been too much negativity from the Yes campaign, ironically with the Prime Minister saying it was all about negativity from Peter Dutton. I think that there needs to be more positive, <laughs> more information uh, for, from the Yes campaign if they want to recover this lost ground.